Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Drop a Stitch podcast. I'm your host, Natalie. And I'm your other host, Denny. And today we're talking about knitting and crocheting for charity. Mm Mm-hmm. So, um, okay. Let's start with, how was your week? (laughs) No, I was going to be like, "Ah." You were going to jump right in. I know. Take a step back. How was your week? What are you working on? Oh, a surprise. I can't tell you guys just yet, but it's so cool. I'm so excited to show everyone. But I can't tell you. I've seen it. It's great. (laughs) (laughs) Um... But yeah, I mean, that's what I'm crocheting right now, but I have been working on my blanket that should be releasing. It should be out there already whenever you guys are listening to this episode. I like this pressure you're putting on yourself. I know, right? (laughs) I'm like, I have this and that and this and that. I'm like, girl, where are you getting so much time? Go on. (laughs) Okay, to to be fair, we found a babysitter. Oh, you did? I didn't even know yes. this. How did I not know yes, this? Yes, yes, yes. Because I was just, you know, waiting to tell you something exciting in here. Okay. <laughs> Keeping some no, secret she, from the podcast. Of course. And to get a genuine reaction, you know? Okay, tell me all about it. Well, she is great. So she's um, a young lady. She's almost 23. And we had a, a little funny story with our previous babysitter. Well, yeah, she wasn't she officially was our babysitter. She One, she was sorry. She was a little bit weird. And then two, it, it just felt like we had to be babysitting her, babysitting our kids, which it's, you know, not ideal. She kind was of just defeats the purpose. She was just close to us, showing us her videos and talking to us when my son is like trying to get her attention and when we're paying you to take care of our kids, not to talk to us not like you can talk to us but like videos yeah (laughs) so now we found a girl she's super nice and luca loved her she um was super um you know interactive and playing with him and not just taking care of a kid and like playing with him just as it is she was like invested Mm-hmm. in the play situation she was reading to him and asking him questions about the book and what do you think what do you see and you know like you can tell you when can tell, somebody's yeah. putting a lot of effort so i hope that continues she's coming tomorrow which makes me extremely excited because now i have time during the day to work more so my times are usually very limited as when I can work. It's usually at night. As we talked and, about in the last episode. Yeah. And I'm tired and, you know, I still have to get things done done because this is my business. So I have to, you know, get things done. But um, now that she's coming, like tomorrow she's coming from 9 to 1 and I have all that time to work and it's just amazing. Like That's awesome. I need to plan so I can get the most out of that time. For sure. And, you know, then she can come whenever we need her. Where's your whiteboard? Uh, Well, in my defense, it's out because the pictures, we are trying to sell the house, so... You know, but I have the little little notebook that I got at the dollar store somewhere. (laughs) I don't see that. No, it's not a notebook, it's a calendar. Because her whiteboard, guys, had her plan for the week and she was supposed to update it every week and it's been at november 15th i think for (laughs) since november 15th it's still in market season in my in my like finish this prep this for the market yeah yeah um it's it's, yeah (laughs) but yeah she was great so she's coming tomorrow we're so excited i'm so excited to finally get a lot of things done during the day and yeah so i i'm gonna do all of my all the pattern in the video editing for the blanket tomorrow so then i can work in this secret project for you guys um full which won't be tomorrow for them because they'll listen to this later well yeah 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 but she's coming tomorrow but anyways yeah (laughs) it's been great i've been feeling very productive and um i think my head it's full of ideas right now which i wish i had all the time in the world to make everything that i want to make and yeah and if you guys hear as you know a little 
clicks and thingies here and there, it's because we're crocheting as we are recording the podcast. Yeah, because we realized a knitting and crocheting podcast where we talk to each other but don't actually knit and crochet. It's, it's kind not of a lame. podcast. <laughs> it's kind of lame. Yeah. And we, we call these our knit nights, but we don't actually, like, it's literally been months since we've knitted or crocheted together. Well, yeah, because we use our time to do the podcast which we love yeah for sure but, but it's we all also the same. love so we figured let's yeah. try to do both at once yeah even if that means bringing simpler project to sorry my and, and and even if that means making noises and, and that's what i was saying she's like oh i don't know if i want to bring my knitting needles because they're metal and i'm like but that's the that's that's the whole reason. This is a you know a crochet and knitting podcast. That's Hopefully what, you guys that's what will find this sound soothing de- 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 rather de- 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 than annoying. Yeah, <laughs> of course. But we're good today. We both got crochet hooks, so mm-hmm. yeah, we're good. It should be pretty quiet aside from some yarn ruffling here and there. Yeah. <laughs> so and how was your week? Oh, my week was good. Um, um, now that the secret's out yes, and that you guys know that I'm pregnant, I, I can say. talk about it. It's getting better by the week. I'm good. slowly starting to get some energy back. Yeah. The nausea is fading. I'm just left with heartburn and reflux, which sucks. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it's better than... It's better than all the nausea yeah. and extreme fatigue. So yeah. I'm slowly... I feel like I'm slowly emerging for air. We're not Good. quite there yet, but we yeah. should be soon. At least I'm hoping. Every time someone's like, but you know, some people have it their entire pregnancy. <laughs> I'm just like, no, 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 don't tell me that. <laughs> well, because she asked me, how long did you have, um, what was it, your nausea yeah, for? Slash nausea, yes. And, and for me, with Luca at least, it was horrible and it went away after 12 weeks so that uh, that's what i said but then i also needed to add that you know for some people nope. it nope. doesn't go nope. away right <laughs> she's like no 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 i don't want to hear this that. is not the answer that i want to hear i want to hear that it's by 16 weeks it's gone that's this is what i need to know yeah most people so we're just we're just hoping we're touching wood we're yeah. you know most it's, people it's for most women it's gone by the first trimester and like i said of course there's exceptions to the rule and some women will mm, have just hoping you know, i'm not one of those yeah let's hope you're not because it's not fun <laughs> it is definitely not fun i can i can attest to that and um i've put a bunch of things on like the back burner because i've had no energy or time or felt like garbage oh, yeah. so i need to like pick the slack it's, back up it's just and... funny because you say you haven't done anything but when I was like you, when I was pregnant, I did zero. To me, you're doing so much right now. The fact that you're driving well, here yeah. and doing all these things, it's like insane to me. Because I, there was no way I would get out of bed. I mean, it's been painful. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I'm like, oh, shit, it's Monday. <laughs> Not because I don't want to come, because I enjoy coming. But the drive the drive here is actually not bad. It's a drive back. Yeah. Like, I'll call Eric and be like, you need to talk to me. I yeah. don't feel good. And by the time I get home, I'm, like, on the verge of crying. And I'm just like, I can't do this. Oh. <laughs> but it's been better. Yeah. And then it's going to go Now away. what I do is I drag him along. So he hangs out with Kale while yeah. we record the podcast. And That's then amazing. I can sleep on the way home while he drives me home. I hope he can come every Great. time. So then, it's you know. Great. He's wonderful. There's also a way that we can do this from the comfort of, of our house. Yeah. Um, so we might try to do that in Which the we'll future. Which we'll have to figure out when baby comes because well, when I'm baby definitely comes, not going to be driving And then. at the end, when you're like heavily pregnant, trust me, you're not going to want to drive. One, your belly is going to be touching the steering wheel. <laughs> is that how you say it? Yeah. Ste- okay. I'm just laughing at the idea because I hadn't oh. thought of that before. Oh, <laughs> it, it will. You, you just wait. Mm-hmm. It will. Well, at least mine, because I had ginormous bellies. Yeah, because you short little things. There was a there was a point where I was just I couldn't turn properly because my belly was there, and I couldn't put the seat back further back because I'm short. Your arms wouldn't touch. My, yes, exactly. Like, oh, that's adorable. So, it was no. It wasn't funny. I was like struggling to get places. Oh God, this is. Um, funny. And with a toddler, oof. But yeah. anyways, okay, let's get into today's. Um, but wait, before we do, we actually got an email. Yes, that's what I was going to say. From one of our listeners, and mm-hmm. she was asking us a question. So yeah. um, we answered her by email, but yeah. we thought we might as well answer here because probably other people have the same type of questions. Yeah. So, And if you guys have questions or 
things that you want your our opinions on, feel free to message us and ask us. It yes. Would, so it's so fun to. It is. So like, it feels like we're talking with you guys and you guys yeah. are responding instead of us just talking. <laughs> so Laurie sent us this email. Um, she sent it through my website, which is fine. But if you want a more direct answer and like, a faster answer too, you can email email us at um, dropastitchpodcast at gmail.com. Yes. And we'll get your emails right away. We'll put that in the description too. Yes, we will. By we, you. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> um, and this is so fun because it's such a great idea that you guys can email us any kind of stories that you guys have had with knitting and crochet related, with markets, crazy customers, um, people Anything. trying we to copy to your you. designs. I don't know. Whatever you want, please. Give us all the stories. Give us all the tea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and spill the tea. Spe- spill the tea. And we will be, um, if you want, we're saying Lori in this case because her name is Lori. But if you want to do this anonymously, just write in there. Please don't um, say my name. Say my name. And we won't. We will just say, you know, your story. And yeah, I think it, it should be so fun. Yes. So please send the stories. We want to hear. And but okay, tell us Lori's story. Okay, so Lori said, Hi there, I am a fan of your website and podcast. Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. You are both so much fun to listen to. Great advice on so much. I feel like you can help me out with advice with a decision I have to make. I have a small crochet business side hustle with friends and family. Not really public yet. My passion is crocheting. A relative, a relative of a friend asked me to make a chemo blanket. Mm-hmm. Is that how you say it? Yeah, chemo. Yeah, like a baby blanket size. I felt bad taking money for profit, so I just charged for the yarn, $20. Felt like I did something nice for someone. Now, the foundation, which is incredibly, incredibly well-funded from an affluent neighborhood I'm sorry if I didn't say that right Um, want to quote order more blankets because they love them my dilemma is I would love to get paid for them I'm semi-retired and the money would be great but feel bad profiting $20 a blanket it's not much help I felt like you would be I I felt like you would be able to give me the honest answers I'm seeking most friends would not understand because they're not craft people. Again, thank you for the time and keep up the beautiful work and great podcast. Thank you so much, Lori. You're so sweet. Yes. Okay. So, $20 a blanket, girl. Is not enough. It is definitely not enough. And you did something nice for yeah. someone you new or sort of new through someone Mm -hmm. and that's a great thing but to do more for a foundation that isn't like oh I'm gonna do this out of my own free time and free will because I feel like it Mm -hmm. that is them asking that's very different yeah and you have all the right to charge now how you want to go about that can be different you can be like I can charge you for the cost of doing things and you provide the yarn Mm -hmm. or like, you know, there's different ways you can go about it. But $20 for a blanket is definitely not enough money. And it's not you profiting. Can can you even make a blanket for 20 bucks? Can you even buy the yarn for 20 bucks? Well, the size, the chemo blankets are just like lap blankets. Oh, okay. So while they're sitting in their chair getting chemo done, they just put it on their lap. So they're not usually big. They're like baby blankets. Okay. So yes, but it also depends. Like she didn't mention what weight of yarn it is mm-hmm. or like how complicated the pattern was and everything. So that plays a factor too. And how long it takes her to and make it. And how long it takes her to make it. But like you're not profiting off a foundation or business or people if you're getting paid for your yarn and your time. Mm-hmm. That's you just charging your worth. If you were to work at McDonald's tomorrow morning, you wouldn't just 
get your uniform for free. You would get your uniform and you would get a paycheck yeah. for every minute that you've worked. It's the same thing. They like, And that's easily explainable. I did it for someone that I sort of knew through someone as a gesture for just the cost of the yarn so that I didn't pay out of pocket, but it still took me X amount of time. And then you can tell them and there's different ways to go about it. Like you don't seem to want to be making a ton of money off of this just a little bit so that it's worth it for both parties. Yeah. So in that case, you can talk to them and be like, okay, perfect. If you want to provide the yarn, I can charge you this much for the blanket. If I'm providing the yarn and the the time to make it, then I can charge you this much for the blanket. Yeah, that's what I said to her in the email that I replied. Mm-hmm. I said um, that she can... Um, charge for the hours like if she is taking I don't know let's say two hours to make a blanket and she wants to pay herself minimum wage which two hours is not a lot to make yeah (laughs) let's say it's $15 so you can charge right away 30 bucks out of the bat just for your time making the blanket and you shouldn't feel bad charging for your time because there's a very there's a big difference between wanting to do something out of the goodness for your of your heart out of your own choosing for someone and there's I have to make 25 of these it's going to take me this amount of time Mm -hmm. and if you're dreading it every time you're not going to enjoy it yeah and you're just going to get it done because you have to get it done. You're going to give it to them and then you're going to dread them coming back and asking for more, which they probably will. Mm -hmm. And so at least make it worth it, make it worth Mm -hmm. it so that you're happy, you're having fun. And this can be a continued relationship. And this is a good way that you can bring it up to them too. Like this is not about just me trying to make money for it to be worthwhile. And for me to be able to continue doing this and providing you with more longer term, this is what, it would take yeah and the thing is too that you love crocheting right you don't want to hate it you don't want to come to the point that you're not enjoying what you're doing anymore because you have to make 20 blankets and you're not getting anything from it yeah that's that's one of the things that i said today i was doing a live with we are knitters and then I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, you didn't tell me. I just gave her the murder look. I, know. I was like, how did I not know about this? I haven't been on the gram clearly today. And then I did another live with my Spanish um, okay. community. That, that one I'll allow because I don't understand nothing. <laughs> and so one of the girls was asking me, do you sell blankets? And I said, well, I don't sell. The only blankets that I sell are, are the, name, the blankets. name blankets because those are worth it to me to make one I enjoy making them two I love the color combinations that people choose and I also sell them expensive enough that it's It's extremely worth worth it for me to make them and so I don't I, I enjoy making them so much and I also I know that after that I'm getting paid so it's you know I I just feel good about it yeah But if I have to make 20 of those and I'm not getting any out of it, I'll be like in my second and "Mm, probably should have said no. Yep. So yes, Lori, please don't feel bad for charging. It's your work. It's your time. And you're not doing anything abnormal. Like you're charging for your time. You're charging for your work. That's normal. Anybody would. Yeah. And if if you're worried about it, just bring it up in a conversation with them. Ask them what their budget was. They might not even know how much your friend's relative paid for their blanket. They they may know or they may not. And if they don't, then you have the floor wide open. If they they do they can tell you what their budget is and you can tell them, well that's not realistic for the blanket that like that I made maybe I, I could go up to super bulky or maybe you know there might be alternatives that could make it work but just make sure it's worth it for you if not you're not going to enjoy it and yeah you don't we don't it we don't want you to hate um the thing that brings you joy right exactly. and and at one point after making 20 blankets and not getting any anything from that from it you're gonna start not liking it and that's that's not the point you're you're gonna start not liking it by the sixth yeah (laughs) you're not even gonna make it to 20 that's always i that's something i always say to everybody even when people are just selling things in in general even when they are selling their work just sell 
whatever makes you happy to make. Yes. Some people are like, oh, I have to make this and I just don't know how to do it and I just don't want to do it. So don't. Yeah. If it, it's not bringing you happiness, then don't. Don't do it. And if you have something listed in your shop, like for instance, your name blankets. Yeah. If, you know, one day you've made, I don't know, 150 of them and you're just like, wow, I'm fed up with this. Mm -hmm. Take the listing down. Stop doing them. For the, and then if for one day you're bit, like, yeah. I miss them. Put them back up. Yeah. Like, you, it's not because you start something that you have to stick with it forever either. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Now that brings us to um, how can we give back? Yes. Knitting for charity. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to start with a question. Have you ever done anything for charity? Uh, okay, so. she. There's no right or wrong answer here. No, but I what I did with my hats, that's not charity because no. it's not people in need, but I feel like I did something it's nice. It's a good action, yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, you know that there are these groups on Facebook, the Buy Nothing. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, every community, neighborhood has those. So I had like two or three bins with hats that I brought to previous markets. And these hats were my very first hats ever. Like from years past. From years in, in, you know, like I call them, quote, collections, collection mm -hmm. bag, bag, things that I'm not doing anymore, that I'm not making anymore, that they weren't, you know, they're not my style anymore. They're not bad. Yeah. Of course, I made them. They have their pom-poms. They have their price tag and everything. Um... And I brought them to markets and I put them with a little discount. I sold a lot of them. But this winter, I was like, you know what? I just want to get rid of them, but in a nice way. I don't want to just sell them to super cheap just because. I'd rather give them away to people that need them. Yep. And I just thought about putting them in the buy nothing group. And they were gone in one day. Of course. I put them in that group. I had two bins full of hats. They were gone all, like, to the last one. Mm -hmm. Gone, gone, gone. And then people were sending me pictures of their kids, of their babies, of, you know, neighbors with the hats. And they were so happy, so grateful. And I just felt so good. It yeah. was, like, fuel to my heart. It was just the most amazing feeling knowing that I had probably, like, I'm not going to lie, easy 50 hats in there. Yeah. And they were all gone. So to know that people, yes, they probably could afford some hats, but yeah, maybe but not. Yeah, but charity doesn't you know. always have to be towards people that need, some. need something or can afford something. Charity can also just be, you know, bringing you a little happiness in someone's life yeah and having a homemade hat like if this these people you know don't know anyone who make anything homemade yeah. and they don't know the value of it and now they get to experience a homemade hat for the first time like that could be something special in itself yeah. you know it doesn't always have to be you know for poor sick people yeah, have you ever made anything for charity? I have. I've done uh, two things, which are the first um, two here on our little list. Um, Hat Not Hate, which is a Lion Brand yarn initiative. Campaign, um, yeah. Which they put, they make, um, well, they ask people to make and send in blue hats. Blue hats. And it's, I think it's against bullying, bullying yeah. and intimidation. Yeah. Um, and so they have like a Hat Not Hat hat not hate day <laughs> yeah. um where they like go through all the submission and like count how many hats they've received and then they, they'll post pictures and they, then they donate it to schools um and try to promote anti-bullying and anti um intimidation yeah. and stuff like that which is very nice S which is very nice um and so when we went to our maker life in calgary mm -hmm. um I know that they were collecting hats there, so I think it was in the plane on the way there. I yeah, started you made making one. a hat. I made the Dottie Beanie from All About Ami. Yeah. Um, and Did I make one? I don't, I don't think, think so. I think I was the only one that made one. But that's weird. I, 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 I don't know. I don't think I did. No. 
I don't I don't think we, like we really knew that it was like I think it was starting or like yeah. it was the first I had heard of it ever since then I've seen it everywhere but I also know about it so I kind of pay I, I notice it more yeah um but yeah so I made that in the plane on the way there and cringe moment I didn't use Lion Brand yarn to gift of Lion Brand what i didn't use lion brand yarn on my hat oh that's and then i fine. handed it to them and there's a little um they were asking us to put a tag and basically kind of say what yarn it was and how to care for it and okay. that's when i realized i'm like oh i'm handing this <laughs> to lion brand and it's not it's even lion another, brand. I another like, brand but i just used yarn i had in my stash and made it well, and yeah that's all that matters at the end of the that day that was good um and then the other thing, one of the knit nights, you weren't there for that knit night. No. Um, but our friend Alicia had one of her friends that worked um, at the hospital, and she was saying they were looking for baby hats for newborns because um, they'll typically put a knitted or crocheted hat on every newborn that comes across the hospital. Um, and so they, the hospital in Ottawa was low and, in their stock <laughs> and they were asking people to make. And so she told us about it. And so for this one knit night, we all brought yarn and knitted baby hats. That's so, so cute. I think, I think it maybe had done two or, and then I did a third one afterwards or something like that. We did, I, I did two or three. It's I still did, good. like, reserve a ball of pink yarn and a ball of blue yarn specifically for the purpose of making more. I've not got around to make more because they take forever because it's very, very small yarn. What do you mean um, they take forever? Well, I use DK yarn. Oh, okay. It's not bulky because I personally don't like baby hats that are, like... No, but I don't like crochet is. baby hats to start off with, and I especially don't like super bulky baby <laughs> hats. I mean, some of them are super nice, but like that's not what I picture being on a baby f as they're born. Like you want the tin, both thin of my... little. Yeah, I know. Okay, you wait. Want, you want <laughs> the thin, yarn, cute little hat, and so they take like a couple hours to make. Yeah. Little side note: I um got for both of my kids <laughs> yes crochet hats. And the first when you gave birth at the hospital. Yes, when I gave birth. She didn't make the, them. No, 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 I didn't make them. Um, I got two crochet hats, and for Luca, the, <laughs> it was sparkly yarn. <laughs> I'm like, what? Um, it's obviously nice, and of course, people are donating it, so they just use whatever they have. But I, I thought it was funny that my newborn hat, you know, sparkly hat. <laughs> Just right out of the womb. Yeah. He was all sensation. And, you know, it fits well now with his little personality. But Yeah. <laughs> I still have it, of course. And then Isa, um, she also had a crochet, a pink crochet hat. I thought yeah. it was cute. I think a lot of people gift crochet because it's so much quicker to make. Oh, but yeah. personally, I don't like them. So I wouldn't I would make, gift them. I would make, sorry, I would make knitted version and then... I would love to see a new baby wearing my hat. I know. I know that would never happen, but I'm no. pretty sure that, you know. And you can't put any tag or anything no, on no. it because obviously you don't want to irritate baby skin or anything. No. So it's just a hat, no logo, no tag, no nothing. And so, like, people have no way of knowing yeah, who that made, you made it, it and get back to you either. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's cool. I, I kind of have this idea and... Most likely not going to happen, let's be real. But I, I have this thought, and I'm hoping that I might be able to make some and bring with me when I give birth and oh, donate them. Oh, that would them. be so cute. Yeah. I maybe, wanted maybe to do Maybe we could do another knit night with the girls and get them, get everyone yeah, to. Yeah, I wanted to do some as well after having my kids, you know. Um, the last time that I gave birth to my daughter, well, I told you the story already, but I was so drugged up I do not remember anything but I do remember asking the nurse where do you guys get the little baby hats and she's like oh people donate them and I, I said um, oh I need and I crochet I can make these can I just make a bunch and bring them and she's like yes please we're always looking for new newborn hats and I was just like oh yes I'm gonna bring so many and blah 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 and <laughs> I was just 
you have it. The intentions are still there. Yes. I well, still want to Well, maybe we can make this happen because I mean, I, I would be happy to come with a little stack and be I like, s- guys. I seriously want to do kay. that. Okay. Well, let's do that. Let's make this a plan. Because after having my babies, I'm like, I really want to give these little babies because the moment it's so special it's the first thing they wear yeah it's so cute it's the first picture they take it's it's just so special it's part of such a special moment yeah. and most of the time it ends up like in the baby's souvenir oh, box 100 percent forever I have, so i have both of mine yeah and yeah. making them like they'll be in someone's baby souvenir box like yeah. how special is that yeah so yeah so I've made some of those and plan to make more. And apparently so do you. So we'll make more. Yeah. <laughs> and if the girls want to join in, then they can make some with us. And I can bring them all with me when I go give birth. Yeah. <laughs> the next um, thing that we have in our our list is making blankets and accessories for homeless people. Yes. And I've never particularly personally done this me neither but i was in a little not like a campaign i i just shared a few things that um there was a huge fire in chile that's my home country yeah in the south because it's extremely hot there it's whenever it's winter here it's summer there and there was a huge fire and of course it's got to be intentional you know classic but um, all the knitters and crocheters, like all the knitting community, got together online to make blankets for the people that lost their oh, houses. That's so nice. And that doesn't mean the way they did it. It's it's amazing, and it's the way that most people do it. You don't have to make the whole blanket. I mean, you could if you want to, but they need it kind of soon. Mm-hmm. So you can wait like a month to make a blanket and then bring it. So what they did was collecting. Um, squares. Yeah. So the whether that was knitted or crochet, um, they just wanted you to have a specific size, obviously, so they can make the blanket. They can assemble it. Into- and they got so many squares from all over the country, and then lots That's of awesome. women were assembling and making the blankets and then sending sending them to the south so i of course i'm far i can participate but i have a big following on danny's way so i shared everything that i could yeah and you know a little part of me was still thinking <laughs> helping about it and, and thinking about yeah. it but yeah i i have never made anything for homeless people either but i think it would be really nice especially in canada Yes, the, with the winters that we have. Yeah. Um, I, my grandma actually um, in Quebec works, well, works. She volunteers for Save Saint Paul, which is, I guess, equivalent to a Salvation Army in yeah. Ontario. Yeah. Um, and she is like in charge of like Christmas baskets and stuff like that. And she'll often get, um, she, like, she will grab any yarn that people are willing to give her she um often like they'll give her money to buy yarn um but it's obviously better if she can find free yarn and she'll make mittens and hats and scarves that's amazing like around christmas time they actually had like the whole details of this family like the ages of the kids the ages of the parents the size they wear um and they made them like slippers and hats and mittens and stuff to keep the whole family warm because this family had just i'm not sure exactly what had to happen because obviously they don't share that but they had gone through a rough time and they needed a little help and a little comfort and so my grandma knitted a bunch of stuff for them Aww. along with her friends and that's they so went sweet. and donated it to the family, and it meant a lot to them. 100%. I mean, you are getting something that it's handmade from someone that wanted to do it for you. Yeah. You know, it, it's just so, it's so special. Nice. Yeah. And there's multiple people that I've done to, um, I don't know if you've seen this, I've seen this going around social media a while back, actually, um, like mattresses of sorts, like mats out of plastic bags. They would, like, string plastic bags together and crochet with it. So it would make this super thick material. Okay. And it's kind of insulating. So they would gift it to the homeless people so that they can lay on and it would kind of insulate them from the cold ground. So when they slept outside, it was warmer. And then obviously a bunch of people will make blankets. And it's a great way. Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be 
the prettiest. You can use your, like, it's a great way to use scrap yarns. Yeah. Grab the scrap yarn that you have and just make a scrappy blanket and then gift it. Like, yep. It gets the yarn out of your way. It makes people happy. It makes you feel good. And there's just nothing bad <laughs> with it. Absolutely. And then the last one we have is uh, knitted knockers. Yes. So I haven't actually done this or had experience with this, but um, I know there's one of the local yarn shops that I go to that they have um, knit nights for this. And they basically make, and I think there's a whole foundation and stuff, like you can look it up online, but they basically make replacement boobs for people oh. that have breast cancer and have no either one or both boobs removed so that if you have one boob removed you can basically kind of put in your bra the knitted boob or oh. crochet i think they're all knitted though i don't know if they're crochet because they're really called knitted knockers but you can slide it in your bra so it kind of fills it up cool. so that with your shirt it doesn't really look like you're missing a boob and it's like you know for the time that your scar heals and everything mm -hmm. like that and then you, you can look into different alternative or just use that so they're very specific with what kind of yarn you can use and how to do oh, it yeah, and everything because it, it needs to your be skin. exactly it needs to be very gentle it needs to be like whereas all the other that we've mentioned before don't really have any specification for what it has to be as far as yarn, as far as whatever, um, knitted knockers are very, very specific because it's obviously dealing with people that have gone through cancer and chemo and, you know, they, they, they've had to have a breast or two removed. And so that's also like a really cool way to help people, give that's, them a little boost I've never heard in of confidence. That. I've never heard of that. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. Mm -hmm. I haven't partaken myself, but because, I mean, we can't do everything. But I yeah. just think it's nice. I think we have this craft that's easy, and it, it's nice to do stuff for ourselves. It's nice to do stuff for people we know, but it's also nice sometimes. And it's it's very validating to do something selfless for someone else. Yeah. And just, even if you don't see the result, you know in your heart that yeah. you've helped someone. Oh, I'm telling you, whenever I seen all these pictures of people wearing my hats, I love when customers buy my hats. That's one thing, right? I love it and I love seeing the pictures and I'm so grateful and I know they're buying it because they like it, they're nice, but they're also um, want to support small businesses and whatnot. But to give my hats for free to people and knowing, seeing their faces and how much they're enjoying it, because not everyone is just going to be like, oh, yeah, let's just go get a hat just just, just because, you know? Yeah. Like, people really want them. Yeah. And it was so nice seeing the pictures of the little kids and the babies wearing the hats and their faces. It just brings joy. Oh, yeah. It Who was amazing. Likes, even if it's, you know, even if you lived in a neighborhood, we, you know, you can guesstimate that people can most likely afford whatever they want or whatever. Like... You bring joy to people. Yeah. You bring happiness. Like, we all, it feels good to get something for free. And, yeah. like, buy nothing gives you that feeling of, like, oh, they picked me. Like, yeah, it's kind of like winning the lottery every time you get picked for something. So. And the thing, too, is that there are things that obviously money cannot buy. In a handmade item, you can have all the money in the world. But if somebody made something by hand for you yeah that's just priceless absolutely so yeah those are a few ways that we can get back um give back give back give back give back yeah and if you have more ways that you know these are the ones we came up with that we know of mm -hmm. and we've used in the past but if you know other ways please let us know please comment so other mm -hmm. people can see and if someone is looking to to give or make and donate they can see a variety of options. Yeah, or if you guys need something, if you are local or, you know, just post it and we can share it as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, remember that you guys can tell us, please tell us all your stories, everything. We want to know everything. Spill the tea. Like I said, spill the tea. <laughs> like I said, I give you a few um, ideas. Um, if you have customers, if somebody has had been trying to steal your patterns if you have stole a pattern and you didn't know or uh, i don't know if your family anything. friends have rude anything 
It doesn't even have to be neat and crochet related. I mean, it's nice when it is because that's... <laughs> it would kind of be on brand. Yes, but you know... But we're down for any drama. <laughs> yeah, we're down for any drama. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, please email us at dropastitchpodcast at gmail.com. And then we're going to check your email right away because, you know... Yeah. That's the podcast email. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Yes. We'll leave all the information in the description. Always. Yes. We'll we'll put we'll try I'll try to put links to all the mm-hmm. I mean the, the hospitals I won't be able to put a link because it's your local hospital. Yeah. Reach out to them and see how to do it. Um, and same for the homeless, it's your local association. But hat not hate and knitted knockers I'll put links to in the description. Great. So if you wanna donate, um, or make stuff and donate them, you can find all the information. Yeah. And, and please rate yeah. us five stars. <laughs> Don't forget to rate us five stars. If you're listening in Apple Podcast, uh, Shopify, I keep saying Shopify, Spotify, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or whatever you listen to a podcast, please rate us five stars because that helps us get seen yep. by more people. Exactly. And we're still waiting for comments on YouTube. I know you're listening on YouTube. <laughs> We're still waiting for your comment. Break the ice. Be the first yes, one. Yes, be the first one. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll talk to you soon. Yes. Bye. Bye.